I got some requests this week to show the entire process of what I do to teach horses to be comfortable with their legs being handled. As you can see here, Ari and I are working from the beginning with stroking his leg. I would ideally stop before I cause any fight or flight, but if he is not going to go into fight or flight, I wanna continue until I see that change of focus there, that better feeling, and then I go back to flow and harmony. That pause, that rest, that being just like Ari is my reward system. Next, we're gonna work on wobbling the joint. We're looking for that knee to move really softly underneath my hands and I want to stop doing it at the best possible moment on that change of focus there. Now we're going to go ahead and pick up the leg. I've got one hand on his knee and one hand on his fetlock. The hand on his knee is putting a little pressure and then more pressure and then more pressure and then it starts again. Small pressure, bigger pressure, bigger pressure until the lower hand on the fetlock can pick his hoof up briefly. We would repeat that for as much as necessary. And then we're gonna do the same thing standing up. You can see the change of hand, the one that was on his knee slides down to hold his hoof when he's comfortable. Now more advanced, I'm gonna use my elbow on the back of his knee and both hands on his fetlock. I'm not looking for reactivity. I don't want him to snap his foot up. I just want him to be quiet enough that I can lift it. Here you're gonna see I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I only need one hand instead of two hands. That is the general sequence for teaching them how to lift their feet. Now there is one more piece, which is the chestnut. Ari doesn't know how to respond to it yet, but if I give that chestnut a little bit of a squeeze before I go down and pick up his foot, he's gonna start learning what that means. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you again with Cleo, who knows what that means. We just build a slow and gentle pattern of understanding for them. Now, once horses are comfortable with picking up their feet, we go ahead and add the hoof cradle. So, as you see here, Cleo is gonna put her foot in the hoof cradle and I'm going to go ahead and do my meditation around her while that foot is in the hoof cradle. Now my job is to either take that foot out before there's any fight or flight or to wait until there is a better feeling and then take that foot out of the hoof cradle. So Cleo has done this a fair amount as you can see and I have time to work around her a little bit and really teach her patience. What I find is that most horses that have trouble having their feet trimmed don't actually mind the trimming or the tools on their foot. They mind standing on three legs. If you can teach them to be comfortable standing on three legs, the work with the tools is actually fairly comfortable for them. That's been my experience so far in any case. Once we have done to the back, we start working onto the front. You can see I bring the foot backwards towards her belly first and then forward up to my knee. When they're more experienced, you don't have to bring it backwards first. You can just bring it forward and then rest it on your knee. Again, we wanna put that foot down at the best feeling possible. Once that's comfortable, then we can go ahead and use a hoof stand or the hoof cradle. You want to make sure it's close to the center line of their body. If you pull it out to the side at all, it's going to cramp the shoulder and they are not going to be comfortable leaving their foot up for any period of time. Now we're going to look at handling the hind legs. It's a very similar process. You just get to see where I put my hands and in the ways it works best for me. We start again with stroking the leg. I wanna stop before I cause any fight or flight, but if I can keep doing it until I get a change of focus, that's even better. After we stroke the leg, then we're gonna think about rocking the joints. Can I rock those joints and let him put his weight on the other legs while that leg 
wobbles a little bit. Again, releasing at what seems like the best feeling that's going to be possible. Here you see me facing backwards and I'm attempting to rock that leg, but I pick it up by accident. I'm gonna take a breath because I think that the feeling I already had was good, but then I'm gonna repeat it and see if I can do it with more feel and tact. There I get the rock of the leg. It feels very soft under my hand. I won't necessarily be able to see his change of focus, so I'm gonna to have to rely on the feeling in my hand. Here I'm asking him to pick the leg up by increasing those pulses of pressure. And picking the leg up forward is much easier for the horse than picking up to the back. Now I've slowed this down to show you picking it up to the back. And what I wanna show you is the fact that even though my hand is behind his leg, he's going to bring his foot forward first. Then it has to come down towards the ground before I swing it to the back. This is something that is inherent in every horse I work with and not everyone knows how that feels for them. So you can see the foot naturally goes forward first. You bring it back close to the ground and then up. Don't try and pull it directly back up high. You're gonna find there's a lot of resistance from your horse. So here's Cleo again, being a very good demonstrator. When you can take the weight off that hind leg, it's time to practice bringing it forward to your knee. Again, you're looking for the best possible moment to put it down again. Once that's comfortable, you can go ahead and introduce the stand. The same idea, it comes up, you put the hoof stand where the leg can comfortably rest on it without knocking it over. Then it's time to go into your meditation. Stand in each place until she feels better. Take the hoof off the hoof stand at the best feeling possible. Or take it off the hoof stand before you get any fight or flight. We are just habituating the horse to associate standing on three legs with the best possible feeling. Little by little, they learn to really enjoy this process. It's just a matter of feel and timing. Once you have worked the hind leg to the front, then you can work it to the back by practicing putting it up on your knees. And again, you wanna feel how that leg feels in your hands. Can you put it down before you cause any fight or flight? Or can you put it down when it's more relaxed, more loose, more easy? Once you've got that established, then you can go ahead and play with a stand. Again, this is just about teaching the horse to be very comfortable standing on three legs. I find they don't mind the tools at all. Once they've established being comfortable with one leg in the air and three legs on the ground. Now, Cleo, has some tight muscles in her hind end. And if she's not fully warmed up before we do this work, sometimes my timing is not as good as it should be. And I don't pull that foot off the stand before her muscles start to cramp. So if that happens and she pulls her foot off the stand, we're gonna take a small walk. The walk is not a punishment the walk is an opportunity for her to stretch those muscles out and get comfortable in her body again. And then once she does, we'll try the hoof stand once more. Once we try the hoof stand again, hopefully I will have better feel and timing so that I am aware of taking that foot off the stand before she gets uncomfortable. We want to remove that foot at the best feeling possible, but we most certainly want to remove that foot before we get to a bad feeling and the horse feels like they have to do it themselves. It's really a very simple principle. It just takes timing and feel and patience and repetition. Once you have these patterns down, then it's time to start using your tools. You really can start using the tools anytime. 
I encourage everyone to get an old rasp from your farrier and use the fine side of it. You don't have to take any hoof off. Just play with filing the edges. You don't have to change the shape of the hoof in order to play with the tools. Again, put the tools away, put the foot down at the best feeling you think is possible. And that is how I train horses to be comfortable with their hooves being handled. <laughs>